So there's a term I've heard before that we might need to clarify. It's called wave propagation. Yeah. What does that mean? Sounds fancy, yeah. but it's actually quite simple. Okay. Wave propagation simply describes how the waves, how sound waves travel through a medium, okay. in this case, air. Um, we've talked about mediums briefly before. Uh, a medium is anything that allows the vibration to travel through it. So it could be wood, it could be air, it could be water. For the most part, we're talking about waves traveling through air. Okay. So there's a couple of ways to describe wave propagation, and one of them describes the speed of sound. Okay. So in air at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, sound travels through the air at 1130 feet per second. So you're probably going to hear that one a lot, 1130 feet per second. Uh, You can do um, some simple math equations with that to learn things like the length of a wave, all kinds of things like that. So it's important to know that. So just get it in your brain, 1130 feet per second. Okay. So that's a lot slower than the speed of light. Absolutely. And so I've been in live environments where um, something happens on a video or with a light cue that reaches the back of the audience faster sure. than the sound does. Yeah. Because, and it feels like the audio is delayed, but it's really just a function of the speed of sound. Yeah, it absolutely is much slower than the speed of light. Another great example for that is lightning. So right. when when you know a storm is coming through and you see you see the flash, you know, oftentimes you don't immediately hear the sound. And that gives us a reference to how far away. Yeah. That takes place. In fact, Grandma used to say that when you see the lightning, you count the number of seconds, and that's how far until you hear the thunder, yep. and that's how far away the storm is. Absolutely, and that's just a function of how long it takes mm-hmm. the sound to travel at eleven hundred thirty feet per second, yep. compared to how fast the light traveled, yep. which is one hundred eighty-six thousand miles per second. Yep, interesting. Definitely something good to know. Eleven hundred thirty feet per second. Uh, just for reference, too, talking about mediums. Uh, sound travels through water four times as fast. So there's less resistance for sound to travel through water. Interesting. Um, another thing to think about is um, elevation, temperature, humidity. They all impact the speed of sound. So for every degree in Fahrenheit above 70 degrees, the speed of sound actually changes by 1.1 foot per second. So it okay. gets faster the hotter it is outside. Okay. So if you're in a live environment outside at a concert and you do your sound check at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. when it's 70 degrees, yep. and then your show is later in the day when it's 85 or 90 degrees, yep. that sound is going to be perceived differently. Absolutely. Simply because of temperature. Sure. There's a reason why the live rooms in recording studios stay at a constant 70 degrees. Okay. That's for that consistency purpose of 1130 feet per second. If you had temperature fluctuations, that's not only going to impact the performance of the actual instruments, pianos and guitars and stringed instruments go in and out of tune Mm -hmm. with different levels of temperature, but also the consistency of how sound travels through the air. Basically, in a recording studio, you want from the beginning of the day to the end of the day for those sound waves to hit those microphones at the same rate of speed in a consistent way. Absolutely. And so if there's temperature fluctuations, that speed of sound will impact how those sound waves reach those microphones. Absolutely. Most people would never think about that. Yep. So get prepared to pay a healthy HVAC bill. (laughs) So what about directionality of sound waves? Because we know that to some degree, sound waves are directional. Yep. And that low frequency waves are going to travel at a different rate just because of the frequency. Sure. They take longer to um, arrive. arrive. Sure. And high frequencies are shorter. And so how, how does all that work in terms of directionality? When the vibration initially occurs, the sound waves do pretty much go every direction. Okay. But certain frequencies are more directional than others. So the lower frequencies, they tend to be what we call omnidirectional, okay. meaning they travel equally in all directions. The higher you get into the frequency spectrum, something happens where the higher frequencies, they tend to beam. Okay. And so, they, so imagine, you know, they just, they just shoot. Um, and so they don't tend to scatter as widely as low frequencies. So the higher the frequencies, the more likely they're going to be, you know, very accurate and beaming. Okay. 
So there's a lot to learn about wave propagation and how sound waves work in general that a lot of people probably never would have thought of. So yeah. it lays a good foundation for understanding just some of the fundamentals of sound. Yeah. Core component, remember 1130 feet per second and you're off to a good start. Got it.